In the last video, we looked at solving exponential equations using logs. In this video, we're going to look at solving equations with logs in. Later in the video, we're also going to look at the change of base formula and simultaneous equations. In question 16, we're asked to solve the following equations, giving our answers to three significant figures where appropriate. So in part A, we've got log to the base 2 of x minus 4 is equal to 3. All I'm going to do to solve this is rewrite this now in exponential form. We saw in the first video that if we have a to the power of b is equal to c, this is the exponential statement, we can write the equivalent logarithmic statement as log to the base a of c is equal to b. If that doesn't mean anything to you, go back and check out video 1. So, 3 is the power 2 is raised by to give me x minus 4. So all I'm going to do is write that x minus 4, I'll leave it in brackets so it looks a bit more like what we've already got, is going to be 2 to the power of 3. So if we just look here, a is going to be 2, we've got c which is the x minus 4, and b which is the 3. And we can see now that we've got a to the power of b is equal to c. So x minus 4 is equal to 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. Adding 4 to both sides, x is 12. So nice and straightforward. And of course, if we sub this in, 12 minus 4 is 8. 2 now to the power of 3 is 8. Or what power do we need to raise 2 by to get 8? The answer is 3. So nice and straightforward. On the next one, we've got log to the base 3 of 2x minus 1 is equal to log to the base 3 of x minus 1 plus 2. What I'm going to do here is use log laws. We've seen in one of the videos that we have the laws for addition and subtraction. On the left-hand side of this equation, I'm going to get all the terms with logs in. So we'll have now log to the base 3 of 2x minus 1 minus log to the base 3 of x minus 1. And then on the right-hand side, I will just have 2. What I can now do is simplify and combine those logs. If we have a difference of logs, we're subtracting here, we can write this as a quotient, so we can divide them. So log to the base 3 of 2x minus 1 over x minus 1 is going to be equal to 2. So we've now got this in exactly the same form here, and we can write the exponential equivalent. 2 is the power 3 is raised by to get this quantity of 2x minus 1 over x minus 1. So that now is going to be 3 squared. If you want, you can just put brackets on here, so we're going to multiply through. 2x minus 1 is equal to 3 squared, which is 9. Then we're going to have x minus 1. So 2x minus 1 is equal to 9x minus 9. Adding 9 to both sides and subtracting 2x, 8 is going to be equal to 7x. We're going to divide through by 7, so 8 over 7 is going to be equal to x. We're asked for this to three significant figures. Um, if you want to do that, you can do 8 divided by 7. That's going to give us now to three significant figures 1.14. I just need to be careful here and check that this is valid. We can't take the log of a negative number, as discussed before, and get a real value. So if I subbed in x is 8 sevenths, that would be fine. And this one, 8 sevenths minus 1, is going to give us 1 seventh. So that is okay. If we want to look at graphically why we can't take the log of a negative number and get a real value, we can look at two curves. We can look at the curve of y is equal to 3 to the power of x, which looks something like that. So y is equal to 3 to the x. And this point here is 0, 1. We will then look at its inverse right here, and this is the logarithmic form. This point is going to be 1, 0, and this is y is equal to log to the base 3 of x. What we can see when I'm saying that we can't take the log of a negative number, we don't take values now that are going to be 0 or less. They have to be greater than 0. We call the domain now the values of x that we can sub in, and we can sub in all positive values. The equivalent is say, like saying, where is 3 to the x now less than 0 or 0 or less? Well, it's nowhere. So we can't take the log of a negative number. It makes no sense as 3 to the x is never, um, it's never negative. So there we go. That works and that holds true. If you wanted to check um, if this, was, this answer was okay, if we just take this, we can just put it in here. Um, so 
you don't have to do this. I always just check, especially if I was doing an exam to make sure it works. All I'm doing is just using this part right here, minus now, uh, log to the base three. So we've got base three of my answer. I'm just subbing in the answer, minus one, and this should now give us two. So there we go, nice and straightforward. We just substituted it back in. Okay, let's look at the next one. Log to the base two of x is equal to four minus log to the base two of x plus six. So again, we've got base two on both of these. Uh, later on, we'll see that equation when we don't have that and need to use a change of base. But for now, I'm just gonna add this to both sides. So adding log to the base two of x plus six, we'll have log to the base two of x plus log to the base two of x plus six, and that is gonna be equal to four. We've got now the sum, or we're adding. If we're adding, we can multiply. So we'll have log to the base two of x multiplied by x plus six, and that's gonna be equal to four. At this stage, I rewrite the exponential statement. The exponential statement is two to the power of four is equal to x multiplied by x plus six. Four is just the power. Remember, the log is just the power of the base is raised by to give us this value. So we get x, x plus six, is equal to two to the power of four. A quadratic in x, x squared plus six x is equal to 16. x squared plus six x minus 16 is equal to zero. And we have this in the form, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. That looks like it's gonna factor x plus eight and then x minus two, that gives us zero. So x would be equal to negative eight or x would be equal to two. We need to check the validity of these two solutions. Straight away, we can say now that x equals negative eight is not valid. So we can say not valid, doesn't give any real solutions, can't take the log of a negative number or similar. So the only one that we've got now is that x is equal to two. Now, if you just think of this, if we sub two in here, log to the base two of two is one, and that will be equal to now minus on here. We're going to have uh, log to the base two of eight. So if we just consider log to the base two of eight is three. One is equal to four minus three, and one is equal to one. So we can see that two is a valid solution. We couldn't have negative eight uh, quite clearly. That makes no sense. It's saying what power is two raised by to get negative eight? Well, there's no power of two that will give us negative eight, so not valid. Okay, right, let's look at this one. Now, this one's gonna be a bit messier because we've got 1.7, so we've not, not got an integer power. But exactly the same approach. I'm just gonna add this quantity to both sides as we've got now the same base. So what we'll have is log to the base four of x minus one plus log to the base four of x plus two is equal to 1.7. Okay, so combining the logs, we've got a sum of logs, so we can write this now as a product. If we're adding, we multiply. And when we looked at these log laws, as I always said, if you're unsure, just go back to rules of indices. If you're multiplying and the base is the same, you add the powers. Therefore, with logs, if you're going to be adding logs, you multiply, it's the opposite. Okay, so that's what we have. At this stage, we can write down x minus one plus x pl uh, multiplied by x plus two is equal to four to the power of 1.7. 1.7 is the power four is raised by to get this uh, expression here. Expanding out another quadratic in x, and this is gonna be messy, x squared plus x minus two is equal to four uh, to the power of 1.7. At this stage, I'm just gonna leave it like so. So x squared plus x minus now the quantity two plus four to the power of 1.7 is equal to zero. So this is now in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, and I've got a quadratic to solve. So a is gonna be one, b is gonna be one, and c is gonna be negative now two plus four to the power of 1.7. So quadratic equation, um, can do this however you like, or complete the square. I wouldn't want to complete the square. Um, I'm just going to use quadratic equation. So we get now on here, we've got now negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4 lots of a, which is 1, multiplied now by negative the quantity 
2 plus 4 to the power of 1.7. This is messy. All you need to do is put it through a calculator over two lots of one uh, because that's 2a. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm assuming you can use the quadratic equation as you should be able to if you're at this stage. So negative 1, uh, then we're going to plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times by a, which is 1 which we don't need to put in, uh, times by c. And again, you can cancel these negatives. You really don't need all of these in. 2 plus 4 to the power of 1.7. You could have really slimmed that down, but I'm just going through uh, there. And then 2 lots of 1, which is 2. And that's going to give us now, let's see what I've done. Uh, that, let's see what we need. Uh, what am I missing from there? Uh, in fact, all I'm going to do is take out these, uh, right, four, t 4 minus, right, let's get rid of, uh, let's just put 4 plus. Um, so if I delete that, uh, and I'm going to just put now plus 4 times that, that should uh, work. There we go, 3.078, so 3.08. So we've got now x, let's just write it here, x is equal to 3.08. And then we'll have now, if we take the negative, um, so me trying to be uh, show all my workings, I've got something a bit astray there, uh, negative 4.08. So negative 4.08. Now, this one is not valid. Um, again, it's a negative number. And if we substitute it in here, both of these are clearly going to be negative. Even uh, adding the two is not going to make it positive. And even if one of them's negative, it's it's not valid. So that's what we'd have. We'd have 3.08 to three significant figures. So if I just went ahead and just got that one back, so let's get that one. If I store this in as A, shift store A, or you can put it in as your answer. If we just look at that now, let's go ahead and check that that's good. Log to the base four, and I'm going to put in now my answer, or if you want to put in A minus one, and then we do that now and plus log to the base 4. Now of my answer plus 2, that should give us the 1.7, which it does. There we go. Nice and straightforward. Right. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Again, this one's going to be messy and we've got something else to consider. Uh, let's get logs on the left-hand side. So again, base 5 here. What I'm first going to do though is rewrite this. I'm going to bring the power up on this one. So I'm going to write this as log to the base 5 of the quantity x plus 1 all squared minus log to the base 5 of x plus 2 is equal to 1.9. The reason I've brought this power up is that we want to write this now as log to the base 5 of something, not we got two lots of it. I need to bring that power up and that's a power law as we've seen in a previous video. I can now combine these as we've got now a difference of logs. So I can write this now as log to the base 5 of x plus 1 all squared over now x plus 2. And that is going to be equal to 1.9. So rewriting the exponential equivalent, we've got x plus 1 all squared over x plus 2 is equal to 5 to the power of 1.9. Multiplying through and expanding the brackets, expanding the brackets of the numerator x squared plus 2x plus 1 will be equal to 5 to the power of 1.9 multiplied by x plus 2. So again, this is messy. Um, the reason these are included is to really test your ability to keep this accurate. We had some nice integer solutions back here, so we may as well look at some slightly more challenging ones. x squared plus x. Now I'm going to have 2 minus 5 to the power of 1.9 and then we're going to have now plus on here we're going to have the 1 and then we'll have plus 1 minus 2 lots of 5 to the power of 1.9 okay and that of course is going to be equal to 0 so again a very challenging quadratic equation um, and I've kept these now as, as powers rather than writing them out uh, as non-exact non values. So a, 1, b is going to be the quantity 2 minus 5 to the power of 1.9. And c is going to be now 1 minus 2 lots of 5 to the power of 1.9. 
Okay, what I'm going to do is just store these values in the calculator so my quadratic equation is easier. So if I do 2 minus 5 to the power of 1.9, um, that is going to give me that. I'm going to store this. Shift store B. So this is in as B. Now if I look at this one right here, you don't you certainly don't have to do that. So 1 minus now 2 lots of 5 to the power of 1.9 and that now is going to give us on here negative 41.5 um, blah blah blah. Shift store and then we're going to have C. Right, so that is C. So in the quadratic equation, we can say x is going to be now negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a, which is going to be 1, multiplied by c, all over now 2a, which is going to be 2 lots of 1, which is 2. So hopefully you can see why I've done this in the calculator. I think it's just slightly easier. So negative b plus the square root now of b squared minus 4, lots of c, don't need the 1 in there, all over 2. So that gives me 21.24, so x is going to be equal to 21.2. I'm doing that now to three significant figures. Um, and if I, let's just store this in, uh, in fact we'll just leave that there for now. Uh, let's put the negative in negative is going to give us negative 1.96 so x is equal to negative 1.96 now if we just look at this right here uh, we can't have x is negative 1.96 as we're going to be taking the log of a negative number on this one right here so this is not valid and we can say not valid or no real solutions so let's just go back to this one right here. Let's just change this over now. Uh, and then we've got now this value right here. So I'll just store this in now. Let's put this in as D. Let's just call this D. Uh, I can leave it in as my answer. So if I just look at this now, if I plug it in here, what we're going to have, and we'll go back to this point, 2 log to the base 5 of now D plus 1. And then from this, I'm going to subtract now log to the base 5. I'm just checking my answer works here. Recall D plus 2, and this should give us now for 1.9, 19 over 10, 1.9. So there we go. That's the only valid one. Right, let's have a look at this one. F, 2 lots of log to the base 2 of x minus 3 is equal to 3 over log to the base 2 of x minus 3. Okay. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and multiply through by the log to the base 2 of x minus 3. What this gives is log to the base 2 of x minus 3. And I'm going to write this now squared. We need to ensure that we know the difference between this expression squared rather than the argument or x minus 3 squared. Because this doesn't allow us to do the power law. That's going to be equal to 3 divided by 2 as I've just divided both sides by 2. This is not log to the base 2 of x minus 3 squared. OK, at this stage, I can write now log to the base 2 of x minus 3, taking the square root of both sides, is going to be plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. You can rationalise this. I'm not going to bother. So what I'll consider now is log to the base 2 of x minus 3 is equal to the positive square root of 3 over 2. And then here I'm going to have log to the base 2 of x minus 3 is equal to negative the root of 3 over 2. So just rewriting the exponential statement, this is the power 2 is raised by to get x minus 3. So x minus 3 is equal to 2 to the power of the square root of 3 over 2. So x is going to be equal to 2 to the power of the square root of 3 over 2, all under that root, plus 3. So that one we can evaluate. And this one right here will be x is going to be equal to 2 to the negative square root of 3 over 2, plus the 3. And we can just go ahead and check these. OK, so let's, uh, let's have a look at these now. Quite clearly, both of these are going to be perfectly fine in terms of here because both of them are going to give us positive numbers that are greater than 3. So what we're going to have then is 2 to the power. So we'll put the power and we're going to have the square root of 3 over 2. 
As stated, I wouldn't waste my time rationalizing that for the calculation. Plus the three, uh, 5.34, x is equal to 5.34. Again, done uh, to 3SF, rounded 3SF. And all I'm going to do now is come back into the power just here and put a negative, And that is going to be 3.43. So x is equal to 3.43 uh, to three significant figures. So let's check. I've rounded that correctly. Let's put that curl. There we go. Right, 3.43. Uh, That's good. Um, so do I've put that one in purely based on the fact that it's a common error of students putting the 2 there. Bringing the 2 down here and then ending up with just log to the base 2 of x minus 3 is equal to 3 quarters, um, which is not the case. Okay, so they're solved. In question 17, we're asked to solve the following equation, giving our answers to three significant figures where appropriate. Okay, what we can see here now is that we've got log to the base 2 of 2x minus 1 is equal to log to the base 4 of x plus 3 plus a half. Now with this one, what we can see is that the bases are different. This gives rise to the change of base formula. One of the advantages of a change of base formula is that you could change a logarithm to base 10 or base e to evaluate on a calculator. What we see nowadays though is that we've got all manner of bases. So we could have, for example, log to the base uh, 13 um, of, let's, well, let's just put in 13, that'll give us one. But we can evaluate different logs. Before we just had log base 10 um, and we had the natural log, which is base e. So if I just went ahead um, put in, a, in fact, I'll just do that one, alpha, uh, put in e, that'll give us one. But what we can do is change a base. So what I can state now, and this is my choice, log to the base a of b, I can choose a new base. And I could write now, let's choose c. I'd write my new base and then my old value, but I would need to divide that by my new base and then take the old base. So this is a change of base formula. If I've got log to the base A of B, I can change the base. I've just chosen C. I have the same value, but then I need to divide by the new base, and we take the old base. Could do this with anything. Let's say we've got log to the base uh, X of Y. We could write this now. Let's choose Z. New base, Z. Now, log to the base Z of Y divided by log to the base Z of X. One nice result of this is that if we have now log to the base A of B, what we can do is choose base B. So we can write this as log to the base B of B divided by log to the base B of A. Now we know that log to the base B of B is 1, so we can say as a standard result log to the base A of B is 1 over log to the base B of A. So that's what we've got. So, let's go ahead. Now with this one, what we can do is change this now to base 4 or base 2. So if I change this to base 4, what we could write here is log to the base 2 of 2x minus 1 can be written as log to the base 4 of 2x minus 1 over now log to the base 4 of 2. If we just consider what power is 4 raised by to give 2, the answer is 1 half. So what I could write is that log to the base 2 of 2x minus 1. Now if we divide this by 1 half, we're multiplying by 2. So we could write this now as 2 lots of log to the base 4 of 2x minus 1. And hopefully you'll see exactly how this works in terms of the power law. Um, and this coefficient that we have here. Right, so I can either use this and make this substitution, or I can simply now go ahead and use the alternative, and that is to write now this as a uh, this one as a base um, a base two. As you can see, it would just give me half a quantity. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and substitute this one now for this one. So what we'll have in the equation is 2 log to the base 4 of 2x minus 1 is equal to log to the base 4 of x plus 3. And then we're going to have now plus on here, we're going to have uh, 0 0.5. 
So what we'll see is if uh, we can solve this, see if there's any valid solutions. So I'll bring the power up on here and then we'll just combine these. So what we'll have is log to the base four of two x minus one, all squared. All I'm doing is bringing the power up. Minus now log to the base uh, four of x plus three. And that's gonna be equal to one half or 0 0.5. Uh, so let's have a just check this out. We've got all of that. Uh, just check I've put the right numbers in. So what we're going to have is log to the base 4 of 2x minus 1 all squared over x plus 3 will be equal to 1 half. At this stage, I'm going to rewrite this and I can save it to 2x minus 1 all squared over x plus 3 will be equal to 4 to the power of 1 half. 4 to the power of 1 half is going to give me 2. So if I expand the numerator, 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 is going to be equal to 2 lots of x plus 3. So what do we have? 4x squared minus 4x minus 2x is minus 6x. And then we're going to have 1 minus 6 minus 5 is equal to 0. So we've got a quadratic in x. A is going to be 1. B is going to be negative 6. C is going to be negative 5. So x is going to be equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 multiplied by 1 multiplied by negative 5 all over 2a, which is going to give me, uh, apologies, well, I've got a, a is 4, isn't it? Let's just change it over. Two lots of 4, that's what we want. Um, can't think why I've put 1 down there. Uh, I'll blame it on the amount of time I've been going. Right, let's do this then. So uh, 6 plus square root of uh, 36, and then what are we going to have? Plus 80, uh, plus 80, 4 times 4 is 16 times by 5. And then that's all going to be over 8. Right, let's have a look. Uh, 3 plus root 29 over 4. So what's that going to give us? Uh, 2.10. Uh, so x is equal to 2.10. So that now is going to be uh, one solution. And then if we look at the other, it'll be 2 minus uh, the... So let's go ahead and do that one. So two, uh, f sorry, three minus that, uh, negative 0 0.596. So let's have a look at that. Uh, let's see if we can have that one. Uh, so on there, no, that is not going to be two lots of that minus one is not going to give us. So that one is not valid. Uh, so x can't be equal to, so x can't be equal now to, let's put that on, negative uh, 5.96. So negative zero. 0.596. Okay, let's go back to this one right here and just check that that's good to go. So if we just swap this back over, that was the plus and that's what we have three, that was the one that we just said. So if I shift store A, let's go ahead now and go back up here um, and see what we would get if we put this in. So not with a change of base. So all I'm going to do is log to the base two of uh, 2a, so let's grab our 2a minus 1, and then we're going to do now minus from that, let's do uh, minus log to the base 4 of a, shift a plus the 3, and that should give us 1 half. Uh, there we go, perfect, that's what we wanted. So there's a change of base. If we've got now any, we, we can just change a base as long as we do, so if we've got log to the base a of b, we can write that as log to the base c of b, just choosing a new base, as long as we divide it by the new base and then take the old base. I've shown it a few times, shown the result, and we've looked at this right here. Um, and as stated, hopefully you can, if probably, if you just substitute in x here, an x here, um, let's just do that. If we have now log to the base 2 of x, we can write this now as 2 log to the base 4 of x. And hopefully that should make sense of why that happens. Um, if you wanted to, if you wanted to write it as log to the base 2 of x is equal to log to the base 4 of x squared. Let's consider now if we put in here uh, 
well, if you put in 2, log to the base 2 of 2 is going to be 1. Log to the base 4 of 2 squared is log to the base 4, 4, which is 1. If you wanted to put in here now 8, uh, log to the base 2 of 8 is 3. Log to the base 4 of 64 is 3 as well. And you can see that that works. And in the same way, you could just say that 1 half log to the base 2 of x is equal to log to the base 4. Or the root of this quantity now uh, the root of this x is going to be equal. Uh, but hopefully that's been uh, some use. Okay, let's now look at a simultaneous equation. So we're asked to solve the simultaneous equations. Log to the base 2 of x over y squared is equal to negative 3. And 3 lots of log to the base 8 of 4x multiplied by root y is equal to 4. What I'm going to do is rewrite these as exponential statements and clear the logs. So here, for, I'll call that one equation 1. We can say that x, y over y squared is equal to 2 to the negative 3. So x over y squared is going to be equal to 1 over 2 cubed, which is 8. So I can write now, I'll write 8x is equal to y squared. So that now is equation 1 now written just writing this in exponential form, I've been able to get rid of the logs. Okay, with this one, what I'm going to do is write equation 2. I'm going to write this as log to the base 8 of 4x root y is equal to 4 thirds. At this stage, I could split this up and write log to the base 8 of 4 plus log to the base 8 of this quantity. I'm just going to leave it and write the exponential equivalent. 4x root y is equal to 8 to the 4 over 3. If we take the cube root of 8, that's 2. 2 to the power 4 is 16. 4x root y is equal to 16. Dividing both sides by 4x root y is equal to 4. And that now gives me equation number 2. Okay. At this stage, it's entirely up to us what we want to do. What I could do now is write equation 1. We've got 8x is equal to y squared. And equation 2, I could write now that x is equal to 4 over root y. So if I substitute this in, what we're going to have now is the following. Substituting in, the x is going to go in there. We'll have 8 lots of 4 over root y is equal to y squared. That's going to give me now 8 times by 4, 32, multiplying y squared multiplied by y to the half would give me y to the 2 and a half, or we could say 5 over 2. So 32 to the 2 over 5 is equal to y. And of course you can do that with logs, uh, but this, is, this will give us a nice value. Take the fifth root of 32, which is 2, and then square y is going to be equal to 4. Okay, at that stage, I can simply go ahead now and substitute in. So if I substitute it in here, we can say now that 8x is equal to y squared. Well, y squared 16, so x is going to be equal to 2. And we solve those simultaneous equations. A few different approaches, but that's one of the way. So there we go. That's looking at solving equations with logs in the change of base formula and a quick simultaneous equations question.